For the month of April, I set out to make over my daughter's bedroom. This is what the before looked like. Not much going on, essential toddler needs, and very simple without much thought for design. Over the past several weeks, my main focus was to incorporate several bigger DIY projects within this makeover. Since then, I've transformed a shelf into a modern sideboard, hacked an IKEA play kitchen, and even built a Montessori toddler twin floor bed from scratch. Now it was finally time to incorporate these projects and bring everything together. So welcome back. I'm so excited to be able to finally share this bedroom makeover with y'all. It's been a long month of fun DIY projects and I'll be adding things like building a house frame for the IKEA kitchen and painting scalloped walls. So let's get started. paint samples that I want to try out on the wall. I know for a fact that I want to do the color shoelace on the top half of the wall so I'm going to put that just for a reference so I can see what the other two colors look like. Next to this color, this is the same white color that I used over in my bathroom makeover that I did a while back. Um, if you haven't catched up on that video, I'll leave it linked for you if you're interested and watching that transformation, but this is a nice white. I like it a lot because it has a really slight yellow undertone. And so it gives it a little bit of a warmth. It's not too yellow either, so I love it. The first paint sample that I have is called Forest Bath. Remember, they do dry different. So we're gonna wait till they're completely dry before making a decision. The second color that I have is called Aspen Valley. It's a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. Um, I even feel like it almost has more of a blue tinge to it. You can definitely see that peeking through. All right, so I'm just gonna let these dry and then we'll come back to them. I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, Liquid IV. Liquid IV's Hydration Multiplier is a great tasting non-GMO electrolyte powder drink mix. Most of you know I work outside under my carport or in my garage even during the hot summery months here in Texas. So I am almost always sweating up a storm while working on my DIY projects. While I'm not working outside on my free time, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love to work out and usually share those in my stories. Summer is around the corner, it's important to stay hydrated, and Luke and IV helps to hydrate faster and more efficiently than water alone. One stick contains three times the electrolytes of a traditional sports drinks with five essential vitamins. My favorite flavor is the strawberry because it's not overly sweet, but sweet enough, and it smells and tastes so good. Use the code Glenda Chavez to receive 25% off their website plus free shipping. You can find the link in my description. Now back to the video. I'm not 100% sold on this color, so I went and grabbed another sample. I know for sure this color is way too dark. I don't want to go with that. I do like this color, but I feel like it's not light enough. Wait. Okay, bona it. So, so we went and grabbed another color. We're going to see if that's a better match. We're going to let that one dry and see how that one looks. But now that I have that one, I think I'm actually really liking this one. So, I don't know. We'll see what it looks like once it's dry. You all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful day. About to get toasty in here. So, I'm going to have to work in sections in this room. Uh, I'm gonna start painting, but obviously my daughter still sleeps in here, so I have to work in sections so that way I'm able to get everything done while I can, while she's not around. So I'm gonna do this wall, and then I'll move on to the next wall, and then the next wall, and then the next wall. So let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. 
Remember I mentioned that I was only painting the walls about three quarters of the way down with the white color. So I figured I would begin there while I made the final decision on which green color I wanted for the bottom. You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest You're the leaves in it all day And I've come out here to see The easiest way I found to get a straight line without using tape was to take a ruler, mark the same height several inches or even feet apart, and then draw a line to connect them. This would ensure I would have even painted lines or walls all the way around. I wasn't crazy focused on it being 100% straight when I went to paint it because I will be adding a scallop design right above it, but if I wasn't, then I would definitely have had to use some tape. A steady hand was enough to get a straight enough edge. While looking through Pinterest for inspiration, I came across these two pictures of an accent scalloped wall. There seems to have been more of like a headboard and maybe even made out of wood. I like the design a lot, but I didn't want to add anything that I wouldn't be able to just paint over it later if and when it was time to change it. So I decided to take the cardboard backing of one of my old notebooks and use some string, a pencil, and a thumbtack and drew out half a circle. I used the straight edge of the half circle, lined it up on top of the line of the green paint, and drew out the scallops with a pencil. I then went back with my paint and painted it with a brush. Sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. Fill my head with roses I 
I took the sideboard I created out of the shelf a couple of weeks ago and set it right in front of one of the windows. I used a steel angle to secure the shelf onto the wall so I wouldn't have to worry about it potentially falling over and hurting my child. What if you're sweet? That's good. It's everyone. There be no wars. Something else I came across Pinterest was this beautiful house framed shelf surrounding a play kitchen, except it cost $329. There was no way I would ever pay that much, so instead I bought four poplar boards at about $7 each and made my own. I decided to make a frame without it being a shelf since my daughter wouldn't be able to reach it anyway. I determined the spacing on the ground and using my square I drew a line where the two boards would meet at the peak and ended up being at about 50 degree angle. I cut them and laid them back down and determined the height, marked it, and cut it using the same 50 degree angle. I took that board and laid it on top of the other one so I could make sure they would be the exact same and cut it as well. I wanted the top boards to have an angle where they would overhang so I measured, marked, and cut one. I then stacked it on top of the other one to make sure they would turn out the exact same. I used this small outlet as a midpoint using a brad nailer, I secured it to the wall. Because the adhesive can ruin the finish on your wall, I didn't use any. I didn't want it to be permanent and if I did, then I would have used them.
put together a few of these IKEA shelves for her little reading nook. Using a piece of tape as a guide, I marked where my holes would go on the wall. On the opposite wall next to the closet, I added a different storage system I will use for her crayons, markers, pencils, etc. I ordered these really cute prints off of Etsy and had them printed at my local Walmart. I think I would have preferred the next size up on this rug, but it just wasn't in the budget this time and the difference in cost was almost $200 more. Using some permanent vinyl, I cut a few strips and added them to the wall to create a window on the empty space above the kitchen. The last thing left to do was to add a new light fixture and we were done. Now let's remember what this room used to look like. Such 
such a wonderful delight. And what it looks like now. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you like to see DIY content and furniture flipping. I love y'all be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!